Welcome back into the Pick and Roll NBA podcast with Jet and Sap, presented by Full Press Coverage. We are so, so close to the NBA regular season starting. Just a few more preseason games left to go, and then we will be in meaningful basketball time, which is very exciting. Uh, Sap, before that starts, though, still some things to have to clear up from the offseason. We're going to do our previews of the Eastern and Western Conferences. But before that, uh, the Golden State Warriors, the defending champions, they have some internal problems going on right now, specifically with Draymond Green. We talked about this the other week. Uh, Punch teammate Jordan Poole in the face in uh, practice. Footage of that got leaked online uh, via TMZ. And uh, Draymond Green has stepped away from the team. Now it comes out that he uh, is going to be fined but not suspended for the punch. Uh, But I'm also seeing that a lot of his teammates are not forgiving him. And Jordan Poole hasn't spoken to him still. So we saw the Celtics suspend Ime Adoka for a full year for something that maybe wasn't, you know, directly team related. We don't know all the details, obviously. Now the Warriors are opting not to suspend Draymond Green for something that was very clearly team-related. In fact, could be defined as assault. What do you think of the Warriors' uh, decision here? Well, it's kind of interesting, Chet, because the first reaction by the Golden State Warriors was to worry about how the video got leaked. And once the video got leaked, obviously everything got heightened to the point where, okay, he stepped away from the team. He got fined, which means absolutely nothing to someone who makes $20 million a year. What are you going to find him? But not being suspended, he stepped away from the team. He's come back. He's going to be ready to play on opening night on Tuesday. So really no punishment for Draymond Green for cold cocking Jordan Poole. But the Warriors were just concerned about how this video got out. And whoever leaked the video to TMZ got $120,000. Good for them. I think the biggest issue with all of this is Draymond Green being territorial in this situation because the Warriors have been the Warriors for nearly a decade, and the pecking order has always been Steph, Clay, Draymond. Now, when Durant was there for three years, he was kind of an interloper. He was right. more of a mercenary. Those three guys, Steph, Clay, Draymond, they're brothers. They were all drafted and developed by the Warriors. They built that culture, whereas Durant came in from the outside. He was kind of like, Not your brother, but your cousin who was spending the summer with you. You knew he was going to go home in early September, go back to where he was from. And you knew that it wasn't going to last long with Kevin Durant. But I think right now when we saw in the finals that Jordan Poole had a good finals against the Celtics, Andrew Wiggins was probably the Warriors' second best player. Now, Wiggins wasn't involved in this kerfuffle, but I think a lot of this has to do with money. Draymond has two years left on his contract. Jordan Poole is a restricted free agent after this year. And Andrew Wiggins is an unrestricted free agent after this year. Draymond's looking for that last final big contract. I think he's getting territorial, worrying, am I still the number three guy in the pecking order? Is Jordan Poole moving up the ranks? Is Andrew Wiggins, who played better than me in the finals, moving up the ranks? Are those guys going to re-sign? The Warriors have a bottomless pit of money. We get that, but you know, there's only so much that can go around. I think that has a lot to do with it. I'm also going to go into conspiracy theory mode here. And some reports are that Jordan Poole was feeling really good about himself, that, you know, he was being a bit too cocky and arrogant, which, again, he's in the NBA. Most NBA players are cocky and arrogant. Did somebody put Draymond Green up to doing this? I don't want to go all the way up to Steve Kerr. Good conspiracy theory. (laughs) Or Bob Myers or someone said Draymond straightened him out. I mean, Draymond's the, the bully, right? He's the... He's the bouncer in the club. This is what he does. I mean, he's not a skilled player anymore, but he he does what he's supposed to do. It's almost like set him straight, get him back in with the rest of us. Who knows? Because he should have been suspended for this, or at least not the full season. That's obviously crazy. But, you know, four or five games, he assaulted a teammate. That's something that you can't have. That's where my crazy mind goes is maybe the Warriors are like, Draymond, take care of this. You know, take care of Jordan Poole. Make sure he's back in line. Who knows? Uh, You know, I think that, you know, the conspiracy theories are great and I enjoy them. And it's certainly, uh, you know, not out of the realm of possibility, but I kind of just think Draymond's an a-hole. You know, he's he's an a-hole you you want to have on your team. And I think, you know, as much of a tough guy as he he very well may be, 
I also think he's he's a little bit sensitive too, and mm-hmm. you know, and reacts very emotionally. We've seen this in games and practices before. We've seen it with his coach Steve Kerr, and uh, it, so you know, it, it's not if you were going to say, "Hey, an NBA player punched his teammate," who's your guess? Most people's first guess would probably be Draymond Green would be the guy who who did it, and so you know that doesn't come as a huge surprise. Um, my my bigger issue and my my surprise really is that i think this just sets such a bad example um that the warriors aren't suspending him and that they're just like basically if i'm jordan Poole, i feel like the team doesn't have my back at all um and i i'm really upset by this i mean i, I don't understand how something like this doesn't warrant a suspension, then what does warrant a suspension? You know, we talked about the Celtics oh, maybe overreacting with Emi Odoka. Again, we don't know all the facts. We know all the facts here. To me, this seems like a massive underreaction. I'm not, not I'm not saying suspended for half the season. I'm saying, you know, at least something. Two games, yeah. five games, something. So he's going to be there on opening night when the Warriors receive their rings for winning their title, right? So, and I'm sure the fans will go crazy because Draymond's, a fan favorite because he's right. that he's their Marcus Smart, or I should say Marcus Smart is a Celtics version of Draymond Green. And I think Draymond Green is a better player, more effective than what he does. But you get my drift there, that they're similar type guys. And yeah, when his name is announced, he'll get a huge standing ovation. How's Jordan Poole going to feel when that happens? Maybe Jordan Poole will get a huge standing ovation. And, you know, at that point, everybody would be totally confused. I guess you can love both of these guys uh, despite whatever happened. And I I still think this all goes back to money. Draymond's looking for that last big contract. Poole's looking for money. Andrew Wiggins is looking for money. I think that Draymond Green, who I think is very sensitive, like you said, maybe insecure at some point, is just like, well, I still am the third guy, right? Right? You know, meanwhile, two more kids have come into the fray. And now – you could look at it that Draymond maybe has middle child syndrome, right? Because Steph and Clay, you know, they run the Golden State Warriors. No one's going to get in their way. But now you've got Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins who are legit players and, and young guys. And here's Draymond kind of in the middle going, hey, what about me? You know, so I think that that's kind of a natural reaction. He had It's not natural to go up and cold clock your teammate. That's not supposed to happen. Um, I know Steve Kerr rambled on for felt like 20 minutes just explaining why the Warriors came up with this decision not to suspend him. And I, I'm getting the feeling that, you know, the decision was made by Steph Curry or Clay Thompson or both, right? They, I would think, and I'm assuming Clay and Steph are always, you know, in the same, um, they're always in line together. I, I got those guys. I don't think are going to disagree on anything. So, I, and I think Steph's obviously the leader of that team, maybe Steve Kerr, general manager, Bob Myers, whatever, talked to Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, maybe a few of the other leaders and said, what should we do here? And they said, well, he's Draymond Green. He's still a big part of our team. Uh, Find him. Don't suspend him. But I'm surprised the league hasn't stepped in. But, you know, we we saw this in exhibition football when Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald was waving two helmets in a a scrimmage against the Cincinnati Bengals. He didn't hit anybody, but still the, the, you know, force was there with a guy who's bigger, stronger, and tougher than Draymond Green. I would rather take on Draymond Green than Aaron Donald at some point in the fight. Um, But, you know, he got fine, not suspended. And again, sometimes this is the level of player you are. I mean, if Jordan Poole went up to Draymond Green and Colcock, I would assume Jordan Poole would have not only been fined, he would have been suspended as well, because in the pecking order, he's not as high as Draymond Green. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm Jordan Poole. I'm pissed today. You know, I'm sure. saying, well, this team does not support me or have my back. Like, I, I'm reading all these reports. I saw, like, Kevon Looney was saying, you know, Draymond has to earn our trust back. All these reports saying that Jordan Poole hasn't forgiven him and hasn't spoken to him since. And so, you know, I think this makes it worse. He Basically, he got away with punching his teammate with impunity, you know. What's a mm-hmm. fine? Draymond Green's made a lot of money. I know he wants to have another big contract. He very well may get it. But at this point in his career, what's a fine to Draymond Green? I mean, that's nothing. That's the ultimate slap on the wrist. So, I, you know, I could see this really pissing off Jordan Poole and maybe some of the players who haven't gotten their big paydays or don't feel like they're, you know, eye on the pecking order in the Warriors organization. I, I saw Steve Kerr said it's the biggest crisis that he's had since he's been coaching the team and so if that's the case that doesn't warrant a suspension i i just don't understand how many the crises logic there. has he faced though 
I mean, come on, Steve Kerr. You've been there eight years. You've gone to the final six times. I could have coached the Warriors for the last eight years and probably had the same success. Heck, Luke Walton had a better winning percentage when he took over for half a season. I Steve Kerr at some point, you know, is a blowhard. I mean, and I, I liked him as a player. I, I like how he speaks out when it comes to social issues. I really do. But there's a guy who takes himself way too seriously, right? So, uh, yeah, and there's not been many crises with the Golden State Warriors the last eight years. You, you've got a great player in Steph Curry who, along with LeBron James, is the best leader in the sport with less drama, right? There's really not a lot of drama with Steph and Clay just kind of goes along with him. And Kevin Durant decided to go there and you won two right. championships in three years. You kind of tanked and ended up adding some really nice pieces and Wiseman and Kuminga. You got a good deal in Andrew Wiggins. I mean, he had not a lot of crises for, for uh, Steve Kerr. So again, he has a tendency of, of being a blowhard. I, I get all that, but just, you know, what's interesting, Jet, you look at the last four teams that made the NBA finals Three are dealing with a lot of issues off the court, right? You got Draymond, Jordan Poole going on in Golden State. You got Ime Adoka suspended by the Celtics, probably will never coach again in Boston. I'd be shocked if he did. And then the finals the year before was Milwaukee, which is in good shape right now because they're kind of just sailing yeah. along. Phoenix has to deal with the fact that they're going to be selling their team because their owner is insane and a racist. And oh, right. by the way, their starting center doesn't really talk to the head coach. So three of the four teams that made it to the finals last two years are kind of in disarray at this point, but I think they can all recover because in the end talent generally wins out in the NBA. Yeah, uh, it definitely does. It's, it's a player based league. It's a talent based league for sure. I, I just, you know, I look at the overall messaging that the Warriors are sending here and I just don't like it. I may, it probably is not going to affect them. I, I just think again, that if you're going to punch somebody in the face, undefended, like, you know, he wasn't ready for the punch, then you should have to have a bigger consequence than getting fined. That's just my overall point. You yeah, know, I think no, absolutely. It just sends sends a really terrible message. And, uh, it, you know, we'll see what the what the Warriors decide to do with their contract extensions and stuff. And I, Jordan Poole, I presume, would be a, a player that a lot of teams do want. And maybe he doesn't want to be with the Warriors anymore after this. So I, I don't know how it's going to play out. I'm sure the Warriors will still be excellent this season, as we're going to talk about in a minute with the, our power rankings. But I, I just, I think that this was not handled in a, in a smart way by the organization. It's certainly not the way I would have handled it. I would say, Draymond, you've had incidents before. This is another incident. We can't, this is not okay. You're suspended for, you know, opening night or the first two or three games. I, it doesn't have to be a big suspension, like I said, but something, something symbolic, at least to say this, in this organization, you cannot punch your teammate in the face, period. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's it's not a good look for the Warriors, who are supposed to be the model franchise. But again, when something like this happens, it just kind of lends itself to why they, they're popular in a sense because they play a beautiful game of basketball and they've been successful. But a lot of people don't like them as well because they do have this holier than now attitude. And I think it starts with Steve Kerr really does. And Steph Curry, who is a likable superstar, but can also be unlikable in a sense that he also seems like he thinks his shit is ice cream. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you kind of get that little pushback on the Warriors that they're almost too good to be true. And, you know, that's why uh, I know I was certainly rooting for the Celtics in the NBA finals and I'm not a big Celtics fan, but I wanted to see them win. Cause first of all, I, I've spent the last three and a half months, you know, dealing with people telling me that Steph Curry is better than LeBron James. And, you right. know, <laughs> I, I don't get into it all that much, but there are some out there that need to be told a lesson at some point. And that's what I, that's what I'm here for, Jed. Fair enough. Fair enough. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, again, I, I don't think they handle it the correct way, but like you said, Sap a minute ago, it's a player driven league. They have an incredible amount of talent on their team. Guys we haven't even talked about um, yet that, you know, they, they have just an incredible amount of depth. So they should be right in the mix for contending for a championship again this season, regardless of what they decide to do with Draymond Green. And um, we'll see if that has an impact on them at all. So uh, let's that on that note, Sap, that moves us to our uh, our Western Conference preview. We talked about this a little bit the other day, but it was a little bit truncated. So we wanted to expand a little bit further on it, Sap. So where would you like to start with the West? Yeah, let's look at the West. Uh, and again, I think as is going to be the case this year, you're going to have maybe a third of the league tanking for um, the top two players coming out in the draft. Right. Right. I yep. mean, I, there's no question about that. So you probably have five teams in the West that are in total tank mode. I would say 
Utah, San Antonio, Oklahoma City, Sacramento, maybe Houston. I I think Houston has some talent, but they're probably all in a tank mode. So that leaves 10 other teams. So it's almost like not worth discussing the bottom five teams in the Western Conference. So, you know, that leaves us with 10 teams that will get into the play-in tournament and then go from there. But yeah, I would think that those five teams I mentioned, they're all in uh, tank mode um, for the two players that are going to go first and second in the upcoming draft. Yeah, uh, you know, we're going to see a lot of teams, especially around the trade deadline, I think selling, um, yeah. really trying to bottom out. So it, especially if a team gets off to a slow start, it's it's in, it's hard to predict who's going to get off to a slow start, who's going to get off to a fast start. Um, but uh, yes, certainly this seems like it's a, a draft where teams are specifically looking and saying, one of these two guys, Wembanyama from France, or Scoot Henderson, who's in the G League Ignite team, could alter the trajectory of our franchise for the next, you know, 10, 15 years potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, when when those types of drafts happen, you see a lot of teams bottoming out. Uh, and so, I think that in terms of talking about the West versus the East, and we're going to talk about the East uh, on a later podcast. I, I think that the the East is deeper but the the top of the west might be a little bit better it's close i think the two conferences are relatively evenly matched uh, but i think the west might be a little bit more top heavy sap yeah it could be because you get the defending champion warriors you got the nuggets who i love this year especially if jamal murray remains healthy and michael porter jr i think is one of the most important players in this league if he's healthy and engaged Games where he plays at his highest level, Michael Porter Jr., he's Jason Tatum. The problem with him is as high as his ceiling is, his floor is very low. He also has games where he doesn't show up. That's how big a factor he can be. The Clippers with Kawhi Leonard coming back. I think the Lakers look good in the preseason because Anthony Davis is really engaged. And if you get Anthony Davis and LeBron playing 65 games each, I think they're going to be a factor. Uh, Dallas has the favorite to win the MVP and Luka Doncic. Um, you know, Memphis had a great year last year. I think the Suns are going to dip a little bit because of their internal problems. Plus, you know, right. they can't really top what they did last year. But yeah, the West maybe is, is more um, more powerful at the top than towards the middle. The thing that I keep looking at is that you got a team like New Orleans, which I think is going to be a factor this year. When we did our power rankings a week ago, I had them at number nine. And then you look over in the Eastern Conference. I think I have it. We're going to talk about that in a future podcast. But I have like Atlanta at number nine. Those are two really good teams to be at number nine. Number nine means they're going to be in the play-in tournament could get right. bounced immediately. Those are really good teams. I've never seen the league this deep. I think there's 20 teams that look to make the playoffs and maybe make a run in the playoffs. I'm not saying there's 20 teams in the league that have a chance to win a championship, but there's more than normal the amount of teams that I think have championship aspirations. And in the West, Golden State, Denver, the Clippers, I think the Lakers have – title aspirations simply because you know they're older so they have to be there and you know if dallas can add another piece they could be in contention as well they did make the conference finals a year ago so i, I don't recall the sport ever being this deep and that's going to make it uh, quite intriguing this year rather than okay steph curry and the golden state warriors are going to represent the west and wherever lebron's playing he's going to represent the east those days are over i believe yeah, and then we've seen this the past couple of years now where it seems like it's a, there's a lot more parity in the league, and that's obviously great for the sport, great for fans. You want to see that. You don't want it to be just an, you know, an invitational or the Harlem Globetrotters to be you know, dominating everybody. Um, and, and I think, you know, yes, the Warriors have won a bunch of titles over the past decade, and last year, obviously, they, they won again. But I think if not for the Celtics' inexperience and some sort of mistakes they made – being that young team, like you talked about, Sap, you could be talking about the Celtics being the champions and not the Warriors. So it 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 was close. It was you know the Warriors ended up winning in six, and it could have very well been seven. The Celtics could have won. The Celtics could have won it in five had they not made a ton of mistakes. It, it was it was a close finals, um, and it would have been closer. You know, obviously, I'm a Celtics fan, so I'm saying this now. Had the Celtics not just continuously repeated the same mistakes over and over again, and the Warriors' experience uh, was, was, you know, I think the the ultimate trump card in that final. So, yes, you certainly have them looming. But as you said, Sep, I I totally agree with you. I think there's a lot of teams that can say consider themselves legitimate championship contenders. I know you're much higher on the Lakers than the average person is because you're a LeBron guy, and you gotta you know maintain hope. 
in the uh, <laughs> before the season begins and everybody goes down with injuries um, on that team. But uh, yeah, I think that in the West, Sap, if I'm looking at teams that I think can legitimately win a championship, I look at the Warriors, obviously, the defending champions. So you got to say, yes, they can legitimately win a championship. They just did it. And I think they're going to be actually better. They should be better this year unless the Draymond thing just unravels the whole team. I don't think that'll happen, but I think with the emergence of their younger players, Moody, Kaminga, Wiseman, um, and, and Poole and Wiggins, you know, playing for contracts too, I think they should be even better than they were in terms of just the overall talent. Um, the Clippers, we know Kawhi's pedigree. Uh, we Paul George is obviously a fantastic player, and they have a really good rest of the roster. They added Norman Powell at the trade deadline last year. Um, which I think was a sneaky, really good move for them. Uh, they're a very good team, and they can absolutely win a championship with that pair of Kawhi and Paul George. The Nuggets, you talked about, Sap, both of us love that Nuggets team. Nikola Jokic, obviously the two-time uh, MVP, the reigning MVP of the league, so we know what he's about. They're adding back Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray to the team this year, so they should be a force to be reckoned with. In addition to Bones Highland, their outstanding rookie last year should be better. So that's a really good team, too. So I look at those those three teams and say, yep, no doubt they can absolutely compete for and win a championship. And then you have to look at, like you said, the other teams like the Dallas Mavericks who are in the conference finals um, and have arguably the best player in the league in Luka Doncic. You have to look at the Memphis Grizzlies who had the second best record in the league last year and have one of the best young players in the league in John Morant. And, uh, you know, are they going to improve on what they did last year? Um, So I I look at that as sort of the next tier down, the Grizzlies and the Mavericks. Uh, the Warriors, Clippers, and Nuggets, I think for sure, are serious title contenders. And then, yes, sure, you could throw the Lakers in their sap if you want to. I'm not going to do it, but if you want to, go ahead. Well, and you also got the Timberwolves and Pelicans. I mean, Zion's back. Look, if Zion can give you 65, 70 games, they'll be a factor with Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum. Well, I think they'll that's, be good, but good I don't team. think they're they're ready to compete for a title no. yet. But I think they'll be very good. Yeah, sure, Zion, if he's healthy for the whole year, we saw what he was in his one full year of health, and he's a, he's a dominant player. Um, and, the, so, and the Timberwolves were really good last year. They've added Rudy Gobert. I don't know what that's going to add. I'm not a big Gobert fan, but, you know, he's an impact player supposedly on the defensive worse, end. Right? No, it, no, it shouldn't because Carl Anthony Towns <laughs> – is more comfortable playing away from the basket anyway. And Anthony Edwards is only getting it better. He's a force. And you mentioned Memphis. I'm not as high on them this year as what they did last year, but they did have the second best record in basketball behind Phoenix. And look, you can go back to that series against Golden State. They had home court advantage against Golden State in round two, and they lost in six games. And John Morant missed half the series. Desmond Bain missed several games. He wasn't quite himself. He was playing injured you know they had suspensions as well i mean that series could have flipped very easily so yeah the west is that deep so uh you want to do it where you just get down to our final four for the conference and then kind of play it out from there uh yeah yeah i mean i i think sap you, you for me like i said the the, you, the three no doubters to me are the warriors clippers and nuggets barring injury of course you know you can't account right. for and especially when we're talking about the the clippers and Kawhi leonard you, you got to account for that um but those three, and then the fourth, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Mavericks because of of just how good I think Luka Doncic is, and I see the shape he's gotten himself into with playing some playing EuroBasket this year. Mm-hmm. And they got he got off to a slow start last year. They got off to a slow start because he looked like he was out of shape. I don't think that's going to be an issue this year. So I think that they will be the final four teams. Um, though I I I can't fully discount what the Grizzlies did last year. It just, it did seem like they played above their head and I don't think they improved out the Mavericks improved much either, but I think Luka Doncic is a superior right. player to John Morant. Oh, without question. I mean, John Morant's fascinating to watch, but Luka impacts the game more. He's actually a better passer, much more efficient scorer, tremendous on the boards. Neither one is really a defensive demon. I would say Luka's the better player than John Morant. He's also five, six inches taller, you know, size does matter. So, yeah, I mean, Dallas is going to be intriguing to watch. The team we haven't really even talked about is Phoenix, which won 64 games last year, and they got blown out in Game 7 against the Mavericks in the second round. Now, just think about how history could have changed if Phoenix had won that series, because I think Phoenix matches up really well against Golden State, you know, because they have tremendous, or they had tremendous perimeter defenders, with what you need to combat Golden State. Maybe Phoenix beats Golden State, and it's a Phoenix-Celtic final, and, Lord knows what happens there. So, again, that, yeah. 
that championship by Golden State, again, it's a championship. You can never take it away from them, but it wasn't like it was in 2017 where they lost one game in the postseason. And as soon as the postseason started, you're like, okay, the Warriors are going to win this thing. Like, how many games are they going to lose in the next two months? And it happened to be one game. So it's a little bit different now. It's that much closer. So I think I agree with you on three of the final four, the Warriors, Clippers, Nuggets. I'm going to say the Lakers crashed the party. I know you I are. Think, I, well, the thing is, in basketball, this can happen. I mean, Golden State, the year before last year, was in total tank mode. They were terrible, and they got off to a fast start because they seemed to be healthier. But they didn't even have Clay Thompson until midseason, and then they were rolling early. A lot of those young guys like Jordan Poole stepped up, uh, Kuminga. Uh, Wiseman didn't even play last year, which is damn scary that, you know, you put him into the lineup, how much better is Golden State going to be? But I think Anthony Davis is really focused this year. And look, it, it almost sounds like a guy who keeps going on a crash diet every month. Like, I'm going to start on Monday. I'm going to eat better and exercise. And then like six days later, he's back to eating pizza and Twinkies and laying on his couch. It's the same message with Anthony Davis that, okay, this is going to be the year where he's focused in great shape. He's going to play 70 games and he's going to be an MVP candidate. If that's the case, then the Lakers certainly will be feared because LeBron is still one of the five or six best players in the world. And I think a key component for them is going to be Kendrick Nunn, who didn't play last year. He can legitimately score, good three-point shooter. That type of player can help them quite a bit. So, yeah, I'm going to put the Lakers into the final four along with the Warriors, Nuggets, and Clippers. I think it's just optimistic sap trying to be excited about his guy yeah. LeBron, and that I you know. know I think you're you're just projecting your your hopes on what the actual <laughs> thing is going to. I just in terms of the Lakers, and we're going to talk about them a lot over the course of the season because they're the Lakers and they have the you know the most famous popular athlete on the planet and LeBron James. Um, so there is always going to be something to talk about with them. Um, I I just I don't understand the roster construction at all. It doesn't make any sense to me. They have so many point guards. None of them are really great shooters. Um, I know Patrick Beverly thinks he's a great shooter. Um, and Russell Westbrook, I heard saying he's a great shooter, but that doesn't make it true. Now Patrick Beverly's doing a podcast too, you know, for Barstool Sports. So he's that's going on in the middle of the season too. He's gonna keep doing that. Um if well, I everybody's LeBron, doing that in the NBA. I mean, every I know, but I, I would it's like it, if the goal is, you know. For the new guy coming in, do you really want him doing a podcast? Uh, hmm. I don't yeah, mind I know. that stuff. I, okay, but I, I, they don't have really any wings. Like, I don't know who's going to spell LeBron because he can't play 35 minutes every game, Sap. That's just not a reasonable no, ask. That's, that, that's an issue. Uh, unless they go out and add someone. Are they going to go to Cleveland and add Kevin Love? Like, I mean, and what exactly does he have left? That's a big thing. And again, no one has told the Lakers that the league is now built around wings. Right. You know, three and D guys and they don't have many of those guys. Like you said, they have a bevy of point guards, whether it be Westbrook, Beverly, Dennis Schroeder. Um, you know, then you got Anthony Davis, who, again, I think is, is prime for a great year. But, yeah, they need some help there and maybe they'll add some pieces. Are they going to try to recreate the way the sports played now and, you know, zig when everybody else is zagging. I mean, it's not football. And even then you can't pull that stuff off. You still need to you know throw the football and and have an explosive offense to be a contender in the NFL. To be a contender in the NBA, you've got to shoot the three. You've got to defend the three. Those are the two main things, right? And that's why Golden State, the Celtics, Dallas, and Miami were the final four because they, the, they were the four best teams at doing those two things. The league is all built around making threes and defending threes, and the Lakers weren't good at either. I get it. I just – I maybe have too much faith in LeBron James, but I also – think that Anthony Davis, he's the ultimate X factor. I know I mentioned Michael Porter Jr. being a big X factor because if he's playing 65, 70 games and is engaged, Denver has a legitimate big three, right, with with Jokic, uh, Murray, and Porter Jr. And that, that's a really good big three, and it's, and it's also a big three that kind of covers a lot of things. You've got the big, you've got the small, and you've got the wing, you know, which right. is something you always want. It's almost like constructing a chicken. Uh, you, you know, you want to have like, you know, three different parts and it, it really works that way. But I, I also think that Dallas needs help for Luca without question. Um, you know, Phoenix and Memphis, I think they take a step back. They had great years last year. I don't think they're overwhelmingly talented, which means the next year they may step back a little bit. And some of those other teams we talked about, whether it's New Orleans or Minnesota, I mean, if if the Lakers are playing those teams in a series, I think they can beat them and get to the second round and then go from there. So 
I'll go Lakers, Warriors, Nuggets, Clippers as my final four. Yeah, I just don't think Phoenix. Um, I think you and I both agree on this. Like you, you can't. It's so much to overcome when there's so much internal strife. You know, you have mm-hmm. all the huge distraction about Sarver and selling the team. Chris Paul is getting older. They sort of denied anything bad happened in that game seven to Dallas. They asked, you know, Monty Williams and the players, did you guys learn anything from that game? No, you know, we're sort of just going to go about doing it. We know Monty Williams and DeAndre Ayton have a a combative relationship and uh, that, you know, he Ayton didn't want to be there. He wanted to be in Indiana. They matched the offer sheet. So he's there. They, you know, didn't want to pay him in the first place. So I, I just don't know how you can, overcome all that internal strife um and last year we thought they were going to take a step back sap they did not in the regular season um but in the postseason they certainly did and they were a massive disappointment and that's unfortunately for chris paul been you know the thing that's dogged him the most in his career is his postseason disappointments and he certainly did not live up to the billing um in that second round series against the uh, against the mavericks and um he's only getting older and, you know, we're we're amazed by what he can do and what LeBron James can do and stuff like that. But you have to be realistic about what guys are capable of when they've logged so many minutes and played so many games over the course of their career. Mm -hmm. And at some point, Chris Paul is not a big guy. At some point it's going to catch up to him and it has often in the postseason. So I'm just not optimistic about what the Suns can do. Yeah. And some teams can still flourish with a lot of internal strife. But there's not many of them in this league that can do that because I don't think the players are built the same way as they were, say, 25, 30 years ago. Jordan's Bulls had a lot of internal strife. Like, they hated the general manager, Jerry Krause. Uh, you know, Jordan was punching Steve Kerr. Dennis, Dennis Rodman was, you know, leaving the team for periods of time. Scotty Pippen was the seventh highest paid guy on his own team right. while he was probably the second best player in the league. Uh, Jordan was always angry, play with a chip on his shoulder, but that kind of fueled them. And again, they were so good. It didn't matter. You know, you, you can kind of fight through that. The bad boy Pistons played with a lot of anger uh, internally and externally, and, and it fueled them to win championships. I don't think the teams are built that way right now. Right. I mean, I just don't think that that works. So I think that's going to hinder Phoenix. I can see them slipping. I think they'll make the playoffs. They're still too good not to, you get Devin Booker, who's phenomenal and, and Chris Paul can still play and, Aiton's probably going to try to play to get the hell out of Phoenix. You know, I, I still think there's a potential Aiton going to Brooklyn for Kevin Durant and what other other pieces Maybe. you need to make it happen. That could happen in midseason because Durant doesn't look all that help that ha- happy in Brooklyn. But yeah, I, I, I don't. I'm not very high on um, on Phoenix. But uh, you know, again, I, I I think that they'll slip. Memphis. I'm still trying to figure out how Memphis pulled this all off last year. They even played better. Without John Morant, they were like twenty-two and five in games without John Morant. That makes no sense. They're I think well they'll kind of bounce back. Well, they are well constructed, and they play defense, right? That's that's yeah. the big thing. When you play defense like that, you're kind of in every game, and you you don't have long losing streaks. But I think they'll come back a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, the I talent's think, not there in terms of no, overall no, roster. No, it's not I, high I end talent. You. No, no, other than John Morant, they they got John Morant and a lot of role players. Uh, Sap, last thing before we we finish up. Um, which and we're going to do this in the East too. Which which team is most likely to end up with Victor Wembayana in the West in the Western Conference? Because we we're going to be talking about him all year and Scoot Henderson. But let's just assuming Wembayana is going to be number one pick of the draft. Which team in the West is the most likely destination for him? San Antonio. I, I mean, I just I, I yeah, they're, they're the just, worst team. They have a little bit of luck too with that. They they won the draft lottery back in nineteen ninety. I can't imagine a more perfect place for him to go oh, by the way lord yeah it'd be perfect then it would keep pop active for the next four or five years till he's almost 80 so yeah i mean it would be like giving bill belichick trevor lawrence right, right. you know from the draft a couple of years ago and that would obviously reinvigorate the old coach so i, I would say san antonio uh, makes the most sense to pick but again it comes down to the draft lottery, which is always interesting. So when we get to the final four and we have three that we agree on who meets in the Western conference finals and who represents the West. Um, mm, I think the warriors will play the Clippers in the Western conference finals. And I think the warriors will advance back to the finals. Okay. Um, I've got the Lakers beating the warriors in the, 
semifinals and I see you shaking your head, but that's okay. Uh, this would be like winning a half a championship if LeBron eliminates Golden <laughs> State, even in the second round, just so I could see Steph Curry cry and Steve Kerr, Clay, you know, say that this is the biggest crisis we've ever faced, or at least since uh, <laughs> training camp when Draymond Green punched Jordan Poole. I've got the Nuggets beating the Clippers in the other semifinals. And believe it or not, believe it or not, I got the Nuggets beating the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. I got the Nuggets going to the finals. Uh, Maybe they will, but Sap, this is what I'm going to say. If that happens, the Nuggets play the Lakers in the Conference Finals, you will switch your pick. If we're sitting here in in May, you know, and and that's what it is, you're not going to stick with your pick from the preseason. No, go, and all this. Oh, the Lakers for sure. You're, you'll take I, them. I'll gladly lose all this money that I've invested in the Nuggets winning the championship <laughs> at twenty-two to one. Um, there you go. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going with the owner, right? You know, um, Stan Kroenke owns the Rams. They won the Super Bowl last year. He owns the Perfect. Avalanche. They won the Stanley Cup. So it's time for poor old Stan to win a championship in the NBA. I'm not sure if he's aware he owns the Denver Nuggets. He's got so many holdings. But uh, yeah, I've got the Nuggets going to the finals again. Michael Porter Jr. to me is one of the biggest X factors in the league, which is kind of scary to say that because I, you know, he's missed a lot of time. There's games where he looks like he's really not engaged, but if he ever grows up and is healthy, that kid could be a superstar. And you put him along with Jamal Murray, who we know is a great player. And of course the two time defending MVP in Nikola Jokic, who by the way, Giannis won back to back MVPs and then won a championship the next year when he wasn't the MVP. I think that could happen with Nikola Jokic. There you go. Maybe uh, we'll see uh, see that sort of similarity happen. But uh, that's our Western Conference preview. And uh, make sure you check out our Eastern Conference preview that's coming out later in the week. We will be posting that, talking about all teams in the East, who we think is going to represent the East, and doing all of our predictions of MVP and all that good stuff. So you're not going to want to miss that. Make sure you check out our social medias for the latest updates on the podcast at John Sap 25 at Jet Stryer. Again, we're the Pick and Roll NBA podcast with Jet and Sap. Full press coverage. Thanks to them for presenting this. It's on the website. Go check out their website for other great stuff like that. And we will talk to you later about our Eastern Conference and NBA Awards previews. See everybody.